Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mike Colleen at MikeColleen.com. Alright, today we're going to talk about something that might be a stretch for some of you. Um, some of you may have had this experience while you're on drugs. I do not recommend drugs at all. I recommend meditation. Um, silencing the mind. Because all of these things that you can do requires you to silent your mind. To make your mind completely blank. Okay, And this is the number one thing that I do in my courses for men and women, especially men, because men tend to think a lot. And so they don't have these open experiences. Okay. So let's get back to what this is about. So one thing I want to say is you can actually speak without talking. In fact, you probably do it without noticing that you're doing it. You're probably doing it with a best friend, with a spouse, a wife, a husband, somebody you've worked with for a long time. You might have a very intense, intensely focused job, etc. Okay. So you've heard the phrase, you're having a spiritual experience. Well, that's very, very much true. So let me give you some real life examples of what I mean. So when I was younger, I had a best friend, his name is Marlon. Marlon, uh, like the fish Marlin. And um, I had known him probably for about four, I think maybe five years at this point. And we were, uh, the father was barbecuing outside. We, it, was a, it was summer, it was in Napa Valley. And um, we were, he was barbecuing fairly close to the, the sliding glass door. And the mom was on the inside. And I was just walking through the door right past Mr. Pilling. He was to my right by about two feet. And he was a little bit in front of me, and Mrs. Pilling was walking away. So her back was to us, and she's walking towards the living room, into the other room. And all of a sudden, right as I got close to Mr. Pilling, he goes, Okay, honey, I'll, I'll get the whatever. I forget what he said, but he was, I'll get the blah, 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 blah. And, I, and she goes, Okay. And I was like, Wait, what? Because she didn't say anything. And I was, Now, this wasn't the first experience that I had with them. But it was the first, like, one that I had really, like, okay, you can't bullshit me this time. Like, like, how do you guys do that? And so Jenna, Marlon's sister, said, oh, they do that all the time. And I said, well, how did you know what she, was, she wanted? She didn't say anything. He goes, he looks at me and goes, what? And then Jenna goes, oh, they do that all the time. I'm like, do what all the time? And she goes, they speak without talking. Uh, by the way, Jenna was a, a raider a Raider at cheerleader for the Oakland Raiders a long time ago. So it's kind of cool. <laughs> so anyway, so Marlon chimed to go, yeah, they do that all the time. And I was like, wait, what? And so I miss, Mr. Pilling, I believe was the one who spoke. And he said, he goes, you know, Mike, once you live with someone long enough and you get to know them well, and probably, I don't know if he used the word intimate. He said, you, it's like, you know what they're saying without them actually saying it. And I kind of like, okay, that was like, I, that was really cool. But I was, I was so young, I didn't really understand what was going on. So then in my early 20s, I traveled to Hawaii for a training that I mentioned a lot because this was, this was a life-changing uh, training. It wasn't the only one, but it was one that really had a huge impact on me. Um, during this five-week training, it was about the third or fourth week, because the training essentially was about psychology and communication. It's neuro-linguistic programming, which is neuro, your nervous system. Linguistics is communication, okay? And how we focus on it is how does communication affect your emotions, whether it's unconscious communication, internal communication, external, verbal, etc. How does that affect you, you emotionally, and how does that, you know, affect what actions you take or what you don't take okay so it's a very in-depth um, communication training about what we do on an unconscious level w without even realizing we're doing it all right so without going into too much detail it goes deep and I mean <laughs> I mean really deep you're in class seven eight hours plus you have like a morning class and you got homework so you go is a, a deep training so I just want to make this very brief is they talked about how humans used to communicate without words. They would, it, they would communicate by sending images. Now images, um, you ever heard the phrase, uh, a picture says a thousand words. Well, images carry a lot more information than each individual word. Cause with each individual word, you got to say every single little word. It's a slower process. It's not as effective. So we're talking about 
communication way back in the day. It's like, well, how did you know cavemen or cavewomen communicate for the most part? Well, it really was through images. Okay, so have, did you guys ever see that movie Crocodile Dundee? Um, where the Aborigine would just show up out of the blue and uh, I guess the guy Crocodile Dundee was like, whoa, I'm so glad you showed up because he was in danger and needed help. He was, yeah, I know, Mick, I heard you a while back. It's, you know, I was just like 50 miles away, so I had to, you know, run real fast to get here, or 20 miles away, whatever. And you're thinking, wait a minute, they didn't have any cell phones, <laughs> no telephones. He was just out, out in the freaking bush, out in the jungle, out in the wild. And so, but this is the thing is that you can actually do this. So how I know is because I've had these experiences. I'm going to share a few of them. So I'll give you one, one of the things I really did was I meditated for a long, long, long time. Now you really should meditate an hour a day. What I mean is you should set aside a time in your life, whether it's six months or a year or two years, and you just meditate every single day and have maybe on the weekends where you meditate for two, three or four hours. Okay. And then maybe at nighttime meditate again for another hour or so before you go to bed. All right. So really make a dedication to this, just preferably every single day at the same time. But if you can do at least five or six days a week, that would be good. Because when you, when you qual calm down the thinking, 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 and all these images flying through your mind, it's, it's not like you don't have these experiences, it's just that you're not conscious of them because you're block. It's, it's not, not that you're blocking them out, but it's like all this other stuff is getting in the way. It's almost like going to a movie and when you sit down, you're quiet and you totally focus on the movie, right? Well, imagine a friend next to you saying, hey, you know, blah, 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 at work today. And you're like, dude, shut up, man. You're interrupting me. Well, that's essentially what you're doing to yourself when you're constantly thinking, 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 right? Is you're interrupting yourself when you're receiving communication from someone across the country or from another country or someone who might be in the other room or across the street okay one thing i want to mention right now is acupuncture is a really really good modality to do to help you begin the process of quieting your mind so when you do acupuncture to call and tell them, you say, hey, you want to quiet your mind, you want to calm down. And I think legally they have to have like a medical reason. So just say anxiety. Okay, that's generally what you're supposed to say. I don't know what it's like now if they've changed that rule. But just say, yeah, anxiety, I want to calm down. After you do the acupuncture, don't get on your cell phone. Don't get on your computer. Don't go to the coffee shop. Go to the beach. Go to a park. Go somewhere where you can just sit down and do nothing. And just feel your body and how good it feels. This is why they always recommend that you go to the beach, you go somewhere where you can just relax and calm down and do nothing or out in mother nature, whether it's a forest, a trail, you know, a, a part, a huge park with a lot of grass. And what happens is after about 10 or 15 minutes, you without most people don't realize. Now, I started noticing after I meditated for a long time because I became more aware of myself and what I was noticing, whereas before. I was having these experiences, but I didn't notice it, you know, until I became more conscious. So now when I go by the water and by the bay and I hear the waves crashing over and over, I notice after about 10 or 15 minutes, all of a sudden I'm tuned into the, the sound of the waves and the air and the sky and the, and the birds. Whereas when I first got there, I was in my head thinking about this and thinking about that and worried about this and worried about that. Whereas now it's like, oh, wow, I've shifted over. I become very aware of it. So one thing I want to say to you that you've probably heard before, but you didn't really believe it because you didn't understand it. You are far, far more powerful than you've ever imagined. The challenge is you thought your power was in your intellect or in your logic or in your brain. No, that's 1% of your power. That's less that technically that was, I think they said it was one one hundredth of your power or, or one hundred thousandths of your power. Humans use very, very little of their power, and the ability to develop and learn and tap in is incredible. So, yes, probably the number one core piece that I work with people 
is I use my energy to guide your energy. Now, I remember when I heard this from other practitioners, I thought, oh God, you're using your energy to guide my... I just like... Because I didn't understand it. Until I did. Until I was like, oh, it's like when I started working with people and guiding them, it allowed them to become much, much more conscious and aware and grounded and their mind becomes silence. So let's, let's use a character here. So this is Adam. Adam was a client of mine. He was struggling meeting women. Uh, he wanted to get married as part of a real big part of his family and his culture, etc. And the thing was, is Adam was a very typical male. When he was a young boy, young man, he had no problem dating women, talking to women. And then he, well, I'm just, he, he didn't realize what it was, but he got into his thinking mind and he couldn't stop thinking. Whereas before he was in his natural mind, which again is the right brain. And once we got him back in there, all of a sudden talking to women was very, very easy. Okay. So what I do with my courses, whether you're a wife or whether you're a business owner or whatever, is we get you to, you to let go and allow yourself to just drop down inside. And I work with you and help your inner, you know, a lot of people, I'll tell you what, and Adam was one of them. Oh my God. God bless Adam, but man, was he a pain in the butt <laughs> for the first months, months of training him and working with him. You know, I would literally have to scream like, shut the fuck up. And I was like, dude, just stop. And he's like, and it took him a long time to go, wait, you literally mean stop. I'm like, yeah, just stop. Just sit there and just watch the world and notice what you begin to notice. It's all around you. It's always been there. It's not like. This is the first time, this is just the first time that you've become aware of, of something or many things that have always been there. Women saying certain things, women's body language doing certain things, saying, oh, back up, you're too close, that you've just completely, utterly missed. So to him or to most of my clients, like, wow, this is such a new experience. I'm like, no, it's not. This has been happening to you for many, many years. And that's one of the part of the process they go through is when they finally open up to this and their mind completely goes silent. They have all these memories where women have been screaming at them, yelling at them, sitting them down, you know, like saying, hey, let's talk. And, and, and man, you know, women have been saying this to me for decades and I've missed it ever since I was a little kid. It's like, yeah, that's what happens when you just go too fast and you don't literally shut up. So Adam came out a second time. Now he's from the UK. He spent quite a bit of money coming out and training with me. And it was the second time when uh, it was early on in the second training and I just, just blasted him and just like, shut the F up. And I just like, and I just like yelled so loud and it shocked him. And he, he looked at me and he, it's like, now, why did I shout? Because I knew that he needed to be jolted and he needed to be shocked and I knew it would work and it did work. And what happened was he stops and he looks at me. And he goes, wait, wait, you literally mean shut the fuck up. I'm like, yes. He goes, oh. Houston, we have liftoff. So what happened was it jolted him into silence. And he just sat there and he began to experience the world and experience what he was feeling inside. See, here's the purpose. Your body, your physical flesh is what you should be listening to because your receivers, your receptors, your radar system is your body. It's your entire, your skin that goes over all of your body. That's where you're receiving information. You think, oh, it's my ears, it's my eyes. No, you're receiving communication massively through your body and when you finally quiet down all of a sudden you can understand what to do next or what not to do all of a sudden you're like oh she's gonna get mad if i say this all right this is called having a knowing it's not a belief it's not an opinion it's not a thought it's not a philosophy it's like this is a knowing like you absolutely know like oh i shouldn't do that or or this is what's happening i need to get out of here like you'll know because you, f you are listening or, f you know, when people say listen to your intuition, they really should say feel your intuition because it's a physical flesh feeling in your body that tells you to get the hell out of here 
or this is a good choice right now. You have to feel your body because that's the, your receptor. That's your antenna, so to speak. And you have to be able to listen, hear, and or feel the information coming in. So that experience in Hawaii when they talked about how humans used to communicate through images and then they started to talk about how this is how dogs actually communicate and okay when you say okay a lot of times homeless people their dogs like I remember I was in San Francisco one day years ago and every now and then you'd see this guy with the dog and the dog was so obedient and, and not, not, not just obedient but it would like know when to sit down next to its owner it would know when to cross with them and the owner wouldn't say a word it was the most amazing thing to watch. I was like, wow, because most people's dogs rah, 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 just bouncing all over the place, running here, running there. You know, it's like there's no, there was no sense of, there's no sense of connection with most owners because they don't know how. Look, same thing I'm going to, I teach men in my courses is the same thing that I teach other people. It's like you have to connect with yourself first in order for the dog or the woman to be able to connect to you or another person. If you're not connected to you, other people can't connect to you. So that's why that's the first step is getting you to be emotionally grounded and connected to yourself because that's where your power begins. So um, years later, I finally found Budacom in Stockton. And I've mentioned this part, but it's the second part. So what happened was um, when I first met him, it was a really good experience. And it was, a, I kept going back. Now, Budokom didn't speak any English, and I don't, well, I speak some Laos now, Laos, Laotian now, but not back then. And about the four, so I'd always bring my girlfriend who could translate. And so about the fourth or fifth time, he and I were just, maybe it was the third time actually, now I think about it. He and I were just talking back and forth, and I didn't really catch it until my girlfriend was just, her mouth was just agape, just wide open, going, <gasps> and I'm like, what? She goes, you understand Laos? I'm like, no. And Buddha Kam starts giggling, kind of smiling. It's like, oh, shit, we've been talking for the last 15 minutes without any translator. So that's just one experience. So another experience was years later, I had gone to, I wanted to see Buddha Kam, but he'd, um, he'd been made the head monk of the Laotian temple. So... I didn't know it at the time because it had just happened. And so he had got moved to Sacramento. So I went to the Stockton Temple uh, and he wasn't there. And there, there was only, everybody was gone except for this one monk who, when I walked in, like nobody was around. Like, where is everybody? And he walks out from the back and he he had just got there. Now he, somehow I forget how he communicated, but he just got there from uh, Laos like a, a week or two weeks before that. And that's why he was left behind. And he was there to watch the temple and he just kept saying i don't speak english and you know um so i was like buddha calm who calm and he and he points and i'm like what and he looks at me and he's just looking at me and and he kept like nodding like like he was reassuring me like you can find him because i think he said get on highway i think it was i-5 i think there's two highways right i think it was i-5 and i'm like i don't know where the sacramento temple is and he kept like Here's what happened. While he was talking to me in Laos, I got these pictures of these signs and these images and these houses and these streets and these turns. And he goes, go, go. And I'm like, I can't. He goes, yes, yes, you can. Or he goes, yes, yes. And I'm like, what? And so as I'm driving down the freeway, I'm going on a freeway I've never been on. I'm going towards the back part of Sacramento, which I've never been on this side of the road, but or this, this side of Sacramento. And all of a sudden, I saw a sign. I'm like, oh, that was the sign that, that flashed in my head when I was talking. I was like, holy shit. So I took the exit. And next thing you know, I knew to take a right. And I'm just going down this country road that I've never been on, had no clue I was at. And something just goes, turn here. And I turned there. And, and I kept going. I was like, oh, that's that house that I saw when I was talking to the monkey. Like the image that flashed in my mind. And I was like, oh, and I took it right there and I was going, it's like, and then I already knew that I was going to come up to another intersection. I had to, I think it was take a left and then go right. Like I already knew before I got there and I, I was right there. So, and then I walked in and t talked to Budokam, et cetera, et cetera. 
Remember when Bruce Lee says, empty your mind, uh, be formless, be shapeless, be like water, my friend. This is what he was trying to get people to do. But the problem is, you have no idea what he's saying until someone teaches you how to do it. And when you finally pop open and you have nothing to show, <gasps> because now you can receive information. So when you're thinking, when someone's talking to you, you're not receiving any information, you're, you're blocking it. That's why it's vital to learn how to quiet your mind and just listen to understand. And yes, number one, this is a, a powerful technique I teach to everyone. And again, with my energy, I will help your mind to literally become silent. Okay. Sometimes people could call me the phone hectic as hell, got anxiety, stressed, you know, worried about something. And it's okay, just take a couple of breaths, just relax. And, and what I do is I go inside and I reconnect with myself and I totally ground myself. And then I, it, you know, I'm trying to explain something, but essentially what I do is I help their mind to calm down and also help their heart to calm down. And like everything drops all the way down and there's emptiness. It's not, it's not a bad, it's more like the scattered energy is gone. And now your energy fills you up inside. So now you're connected to you. So by the way, if you look at this image, this is not the way to connect. You should not connect like there's a rope connecting your forehead to their forehead or your throat to their throat or your heart chakra to their heart chakra. That's how most people connect. And now that's bondage. And it's also a very narrow connection and it's not healthy at all. Okay. This is not a healthy way to connect. But unfortunately, this is how most people connect on the planet. This is what causes bondage, okay? It's also an extremely narrow, limited way of, it's like this little tube that you're trying to, it's like a straw that you're trying to pass communication through. And you can only allow one tiny bit of information at a time. So it's very limiting communication. And unfortunately on the planet, this is how most people communicate. And this is how you should communicate. This is how you should be uh, pretty much at all times. Okay. This is the open receptive system. This is technically the right brain system, which really isn't it's see, don't, it's not just your brain, like the right side inside your skull. No, this opens up to your entire body, your entire nervous system, all the way down to your toes, all the way down to your fingers, all the way around you, front, back. And it's this expanded, electrical energy system that surrounds your body. And by the way, the earth has the same thing. Okay. The planet earth has a magnetic system that surrounds it. Okay. Everything does plants, trees, animals, everything has this electromagnetic system that that's around them. Okay. So you're your own little unit of energy. And when you open up like this, you can receive massive, massive amounts of information. One of the things I learned uh, from NLP, and I started applying this at, not only at the trainings, at the seminars, but also in college, because I was going to, to college at the time studying psychology, was I used to really focus and very narrow. And what I did is I learned to expand my awareness. And it's like opening a wide open door and all of a sudden all this information could download not only download, but it was much more comfortable and effortless where the other way was you were straining and forcing and it was just a horrible, it's a horrible system. So essentially this is how you tune into yourself and tune into mother nature and you tune into the energies that's around you. So the last thing I want to say is that communication is energy. And I'm talking about atoms, electrons, uh, all that stuff. I don't know if <laughs> neutrons the right word, but it's all of that stuff. Okay. Tiny, tiny bits of just millions and millions and trillions and bits of information, or billions of bits of information. And when you see, I'm going to tell you right now, communication is energy period. When you learn to open up, all of a sudden you have much greater understanding of what people, you know, you'll understand people even when they don't understand what they're saying themselves. All right. So there's another little thing I want to say. Let's see. All right. So when you open up like this and expand your awareness, the next thing that I would teach you, and here's something you can apply immediately. Listen for the, their intention. So sure. See words are coming out, but let me tell you something about words. 
words are very, um, not only do I want to say archaic, but it's an extremely limited form of communication. And it's the very reason why narcissists don't want you to open up. They want you to stay in the closed system so they can manipulate you, okay? When you open up, all of a sudden you are very aware of what they're doing, even though they're not telling you. It's the indirect things that they do. It's the way they do it. All of a sudden you're reading into it, or I should say receiving the information of what they're really trying to do to you. You know, one of the things I want to say right now is... Um, it's the whole reason why I got out of my last narcissistic experience as fast as I did. And the other thing is this, they lie to themselves because they keep themselves in that limited system. And they just constantly bullshit themselves as, and this is the first time I'm saying it is they think that I don't know what they did. I very much know what you guys did. And I very much know what you're very conscious and very aware of it. All this time you guys thought I didn't know, but you weren't sure. And now you are. And now let the worries begin. I know exactly what you did. The thing that blew my mind was that you somehow lied to yourself well enough to actually kind of sort of believe that somehow I didn't know. That was just like, wow. And also to the group of people that gather around together, but you gather together to watch my videos and study me. Number one, I know you're doing it. Number two, I also know that these videos have been changing you. Surprise. All right. So before I get to my goddaughter, uh, it's the final experience is there was another gentleman, someone who I did NLP trainings with for years. We, we, uh, we basically teamed up and we, we just happened to be taking the same series of trainings for two years. So I had, I had lost touch with Rob. He's in the UK. And one morning I woke up and I was just thinking about Rob. I was like, man, I haven't heard about heard from Rob. And I think it was like six months or longer, maybe even nine months. I don't think it was that long, but it was a long time. And I, I get out of bed and I start walking towards the bathroom. And I uh, have these two sliding doors for the closet. And it was slightly open. And this box where I keep letters in, somehow I'd pull, because it was lifted up like there's like shoe shelves. So it was about two feet off the ground or about a foot off the ground it somehow it slid out and the box was sitting at an angle and this one letter was sticking up and I was like what the hell and I go and I, I bet this is the letter Rob sent me a long time ago and sure enough that's right oh I look at it and it's Rob and guess what the phone rings and I'm like no way guess who was on the phone yep Rob from England so I answered the phone say hey Rob how's it going he's like how do, how could you possibly know it was me so we, we laughed a bit. So the thing is back then we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have these phones where you could, the name would pop up. It was just a landline up on the wall. So yes, he called while I picked up that phone, while I was looking to see what letter or who it was from. He called in that moment. All right. So I'm going to end it with this. So I had this really, uh, cute little goddaughter, someone who I just absolutely loved. And um, it was after one of her volleyball games, I think, or maybe basketball. No, I think it's volleyball. And we were gathered around outside, out front of the gymnasium. There's a bunch of parents and kids, and everyone's walking by. And Because we had, uh, well, not we, but they had won the game. And there's a group of about 8, 12 parents and me and Cindy. And I'm trying to think who else was there. And uh, what ended up happening was... At this point in time, I was so much more open to it and aware of it because it was just so obvious. Is I had remember looking at her. Some of the parents were talking to. I think they were talking about where to go to get. You know, where do you guys want to go to go to dinner? You know, should we go to you know the Cheesecake Factory? Should we go to this place, P.F. Chang's, etc. And I just remember all of a sudden I looked at Cindy and nodded. Now she was to my right, and then I looked back at the parent that was talking. And then I looked at her again and nodded and then she looked at me. Now we weren't looking at each other. And all of a sudden one of the parents that was across the way that happened to be watching us, she goes, you guys talk without talking. And I, I looked at her and go, what? And she goes, you guys talk without talking. And I'm like, no, we don't. And Cindy goes, yeah, we do. We do it all the time. And then the minute I, she said that, I goes, oh shit, we've been doing it. We were doing it right now. It was so 
semi-conscious that even as aware as I was back then, if they didn't point it out right in that moment, I wouldn't have caught it. If I could give you one tip right now, allow your awareness to drop down into your, your belly, your solar plexus, and your chest area, like, in, like, like a ball that expands to the front of your chest, the back of your chest, to the left side of your ribs, the right side, and, and, and all the way drop down into your belly, into your hips. And, and, that, uh, uh, and so have your awareness on that area, that entire area from your heart all the way down into your hips, your belly, left to right, etc. While you're talking to someone, allow your awareness to be there and begin to notice what you're feeling and what you're picking up while you're talking to them. This is just one of the techniques that I go over with you again and again. And there's much, there's much more to it. There's a greater level of expansion and other techniques, but that really is a really good one to start with, a very solid core one. So I'm going to leave it at that, people. Communication is much, much more in-depth than you ever thought. It is the atoms and electrons and millions and billions of bits of information transferring. You know what communication is? It's energy transferring from one, from one entity to another, from one being to another. It's, communication is energy. And this is why I can do energy healing so effectively, because I know it's energy. It's just shifting the energy, cleaning the energy, shifting out the old energy, bringing in new energy. God bless you guys. I'll see you in the next video.